Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I'm really excited to discuss a few stories. Starting with a new i9 coming, an iGPU over Nvidia's discrete card, the 4700G beats 95 watts, and Nvidia goes 8 nanometers? Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Intel looks to be readying a new CPU that's essentially a cut down 10900K. The new chip was originally spotted by Tom Apisak on Geekbench. As you can see, it's called the i9-10850K, and it's a 10-core, 20-thread CPU. What's interesting is that given the K moniker, it obviously has an unlocked multiplier. One difference between it and the 10900K is a 100MHz slower base clock. Oddly enough, it has the same 5.2GHz turbo boost max, but it probably doesn't have a thermal velocity boost like the 10900K. Still, that's not a big difference, and it would likely overclock to similar levels as the 10900K. The bad news is that it's probably made for OEMs only, so system builders may not have the option. Here's the hoping. Now, while I usually discuss tech on a surface level, if you're ready to dive deeper or even pursuing a career in it, learn the right way with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the online tool that makes learning things like math, physics, and computer science easy. Instead of explaining things, they show you and let you actually do it yourself. Brilliant teaches you the concepts so you know why things work. And they've got everything from quantum computing, machine learning, algorithm fundamentals, to even cryptocurrency. Plus, there's daily challenges to keep you sharp and learning more. You can sit around all day or learn a new skill by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermeld. And the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up, it looks like Intel's next-gen Tiger Lake is set to be a huge jump for integrated GPUs in general. The story originally comes from RO Game, who found and shared a new benchmark on the upcoming Tiger Lake i7-1165G7. What's incredible about this is that it actually matches the 25-watt MX350. Remember that the MX350 is a new entry-level notebook GPU. Here's the thing though, it's a discrete GPU, meaning Intel's integrated GPU, and remember that this is likely a 25 watt package, so the iGPU and CPU are 25 watts combined versus Nvidia's discrete GPU. Also, remember that this will be the same XE architecture that Intel is planning to use for their upcoming discrete GPUs. Now, I will say that the MX350 is ultimately based on Pascal, but that's still a big improvement. Let's just say it makes me excited for Intel's upcoming discrete cards. Of course, I'm also really excited for AMD's next-gen Zen 3 architecture. Fortunately, their next-gen Epic has been spotted. It was originally shared by Executable Fix on Twitter, who found an engineering sample for their next-gen Epic Milan in a changelog for Linux. The sample had a base clock of 1.5 GHz and a boost of 2.2. According to video cards, that's very close to second-gen Epic's engineering sample clocks. At the end of the day, this doesn't tell us much, but it's nice to see the new process make its way into the wild. Hopefully, benchmarks will be next. Next up for today, we have our first desktop Ryzen 4000G APU benchmark from Cinebench. The reason I think this is such a big deal is because Cinebench scores are really easy to compare, and they get pretty consistent results. Either way, the benchmark was done and shared by IT Cooker on Facebook, and from what I understand, it's the 4700G from X Fastest that he shared last week. Regardless, you can see that it is the flagship 4700G, which is an 8-core, 16-thread part. Now, what's interesting is that it's rated at 65 watts, yet it scores closer to AMD's 95-watt 3800X. Remember that this has way less L3 cache when compared to desktop Ryzen 3000 because it's basically a monolithic die. Clearly, this helps performance in quite a few areas. That, or maybe this is built on a better 7 nanometer process. Lastly for today, I've got a big story on Nvidia's next-gen RTX 3000 series. Starting things off, Copite 7 Kimmy, who's been a very knowledgeable leaker when it comes to next-gen Ampere. Besides getting a ton of things right on the company's A100 chip long before it was announced, he's shown that he rarely claims to be 100% sure. That is, until now. In a recent tweet, the user stated that he's 100% sure that Nvidia's upcoming Ampere gaming GPUs will be built on Samsung's 8 nanometer process. That seems a bit odd considering Nvidia's A100 chip, which is also based on Ampere, runs on TSMC's 7 nanometers. But here's the thing, this isn't the first time we've heard this. Moore's Law is Dead mentioned it, but he said that the higher end cards wouldn't be, while Copite 7 Kimmy is sure that they all are. 
Of course, as I've said in the past, things can change behind the scenes, so an earlier rumor could have been true at the time of the rumor. Of course, plenty of rumors are just that, and while Kopai 7 Kimmy has proven himself in the past, this is still on the rumor side, though something I'd argue very well seems likely. What that could mean for performance is tough to say. Samsung's 8 nanometer process certainly isn't as efficient as TSMC's 7 nanometers, especially 7 nanometers plus if AMD actually uses it. With that said, it is a big jump from NVIDIA's current 12 nanometer process from TSMC, and as we know from Turing, NVIDIA's architecture can do some amazing things. At least this way, AMD really might stand a chance with Big Navi. At the end of the day, it'll definitely be interesting to see what both companies come up with. So while that does it for today, are you excited for NVIDIA's next gen Ampere, or are you more ready for Big Navi? Let me know down in the comments below, and make sure to check out Brilliant in the description. And as always, have a great day.